What's up, it's Ben from Wad Prep, and today I have a super unique, special video. And it's all about double under crossovers. So double under crossovers, as you know, is a brand new, brand new movement that's come on the scene thanks to the 2022 CrossFit Open, where a lot of athletes struggle with them. A lot of people were a little frustrated based on facial expressions and perceived words that they said on the screen. But there was one victorious man that rose to the occasion, and obviously some women were able to do it too, uh, and that was Nick Matthew. So in honor of Nick Matthew, I'm going to try to teach myself double under crossovers, but the first thing I need to do is fix my attire because Nick Matthew had, I think, the best style at the games. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put on a limited edition Watt Prep cutoff. Obviously, we all know that this is why Nick Matthew was able to do so well in the double under crossover. So I'm hoping that this video can be used as a tutorial. I have never tried double under crossovers before. I have no idea if I'm going to be able to do them. We probably won't release the video, to be honest, if I get zero. But I'm really hoping that what I can do today is to give you kind of a step-by-step -step on how I personally learn new movements, how I would strategize approaching double under crossover specifically, because I do think this is a skill that will stay. And of course, uh, the step number one is to look like the guy who was able to do it, and that's to start with a, with a crop top. So this is the first time I've ever worn a crop top. I don't know how I like it, but here we are. Okay, so with that, let me walk through what I have out here on the floor. I have several different sizes of the wad prep jump rope, and it comes with a light rope and a heavy rope. So it comes with this two ounce cable, and then it comes with a five ounce heavier cable in different sizes. So just to show you that this isn't a very edited video, uh, I'm gonna show you all the bloopers, show you all the hardship. Uh, but first I'm gonna show you that I can do double unders, okay? So I'm able to do double unders very proficiently, and normally I'm gonna use the medium rope, which is about eight foot six for me. If I step on it with one foot, you can see how high the rope comes. It's actually just below my chest, okay? So it's a pretty short rope. I know without even trying a crossover, this rope is probably too short. The reason being is because when my rope is in a perfect parabola shape, this jump rope barely touches the ground. You can hear it tapping. It barely touches the ground when I'm doing double unders. However, as soon as I go to cross it, my guess is that crossing it back and forth is gonna naturally lift that rope high in the air and it's gonna cause me to lose contact to the ground. It's gonna cause me to trip. So even without trying, I know that this rope is a little bit too short, which is why I have the larger sizes on the floor. So that's just my hypothesis. We'll see how it actually goes. And then next, I'd also recommend just right away, I could tell that a lot of people's jump ropes were way, way too fast. They didn't have a rigid enough cable, and those super duper speed ropes, I don't think are a very good rope to use for double under crossovers. And that's because generally when we're learning new jump rope skills, having a rope that's slightly heavier really helps. And that's why you saw a lot of people actually using beaded ropes back from elementary school. They had those beaded ropes, and that's how these games athletes were able to do some crossover double unders. So first, let's try it out. Let's see if I can get my first one. But if I don't like the way that it's spinning, I'm immediately gonna move to a longer rope, which is gonna give me more room for air. I think one key is I'm going to have to jump really high. But you can see right as I go to do that crossover, I'm tripping. So I don't, I think I need to go with a longer rope. Yeah. So I'm tripping too much. I think it's because the rope's hitting my feet as I'm crossing over. So I'm going to bump it up to a large rope. And what's cool, I'm going to throw that to the side. What's cool is I can do that just by changing out my cables. So this one, no, I'll start with the large. Um, so I'm going to go one size up, but I actually think that Based on what I was just feeling there, I might even go to the XL size, the nine foot six rope that's designed for people who are like six foot five, because I have a feeling that a really long rope is gonna help out here. All right, let's try some more. I'm kinda worried I'm not gonna be able to do any. Okay. Ooh, that was close. Okay, I almost got one. I barely just tripped on my left foot. I think I'm gonna get one here. I think I'm rushing. I can feel I'm tripping too early, so I need to be more patient. All right. This is already frustrating. I think one key also that I remember seeing at the games was that people were jumping really, really high. So they were jumping really high, and that helped give them the room they needed to do this movement. Maybe I'm not reaching across enough. Like, I feel like I'm crossing, but if I only cross my hands to here, obviously I'm gonna trip. The rope's not gonna be wide enough. So I think I'm really gonna exaggerate that cross this time. 
Maybe practice some singles. Okay, I was able to do some single crossovers. That's a start. I had never done those before. And I think what's happening, if you notice, this happens a lot with double unders. Whew, I'm getting tired and I'm getting worried. Is when I'm going to do that crossover, I'm going too fast and I'm immediately tripping, which means I'm probably spinning the rope too early and that's why it's hitting the front of my foot. That's my guess. We could maybe throw a couple slow-mos in there of me tripping. I know it won't be super high quality, but that's my thought. I need to be more slow and methodical. Woo, that one was close. I actually felt it go around my body that time. Boom, first double under crossover, did it. Oh shoot, I forgot to stop my, start my watch. That was my first double under crossover. Now, I've done one. Now my goal is can I hit a single consistently? So this is just how I teach double unders. I got one and it wasn't pretty, but I'm just gonna try to grease the groove and do more. And I know it's gonna be a struggle. There we go, I got another one, okay? So goal is to keep doing that. Again, I'm just gonna try to do singles. Can I do singles with less tripping? And I'm really noticing that's that first rep that's tripping me up. So something is wrong with the first spin. Once I get the first one down, the second spin seems to be easy. So I'm doing something wrong. I really think it's not crossing fast enough. There's another one. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. The reason I'm tripping is because I'm crossing to here. This is not wide enough. I really need to practice my, my reach. And if I get my hands nice and wide, this gets the rope in a position where it's gonna cross over my body better without tripping. So I'm really focusing on reaching across, getting some width here, rather than doing a half-hearted reach. There we go, baby. All right. All right, so that was three in a row. Not in a row, but not unbroken, but you can see what I'm doing here is I'm slowly using my mistakes to tell me what's going wrong. Now I realize each one of those reps that I, the three that I just did successfully, I reached across really, really aggressively. And I actually was able to keep the rope spinning, so I kind of skipped ahead. Once I learn, quick 10 second pause for me to catch my breath. Okay, all right. So once I realized that it was all about the reach, I needed to get good extension of my arms in the cross. As soon as I realized that, they started flowing. So when I'm learning something like double unders, or in this case, double under crossovers, or when I'm teaching them, I like to use a tiered approach. So step one was just try it out, but try to get one. Once I got my first one, you saw how long that took. Then it was, can I do one consistently? So let's see if after a little bit of a break, am I still gonna be able to do it? You know, five minutes ago, there's not a chance. I was tripping every single one, but now would you bet money that I'm gonna get this rep? I don't know, Travis, videographer, would you bet money I'm gonna get this? What do you think? He's giving me a thumbs up. I don't know, let's find out. Boom, okay, I'm hitting him consistently. Yes, Travis, you're right. Thank you for believing me, brother. So I'm hitting him consistently now. Now, I would say the next level is can I keep the rope spinning? I've already demonstrated that I can do that, so let's try it. I didn't reach far enough. I wanna see if I can do the rep and keep the rope spinning. Here we go. Okay, so I'm able to do the rep, keep the rope spinning. That's, that's kind of the next step in double unders is you see if you can do double, single, 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 double, single, 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 double. And that's kind of what I'm doing now. Now, I don't necessarily think I'm ready for it, but for the sake of this video, I'm gonna see if I can actually string some together, which sounds crazy to me, but we're gonna see if I can do it. If I do, that'll probably wrap up this video. We'll see how much unbroken I can get, but you can see the tiered approach that I took. And for me, it was all about getting a nice big extension. Ouch. Man, I have to say the whip marks on this one are gonna suck. They're way worse. What have I lost? See, that's why it's important when you're learning something. If you just get it and say, okay, I'm done. You have to expose yourself to repeated failure so that you can learn how to actually do it consistently. And I'm kind of back to square one, it seems. Like something's going on with my cross. That's messing it up. Probably not, I'm probably messing up the timing. 
Another thing I'm noticing is like when I fold forward and kind of reach, kind of like dump my arms forward, it seems like I'm getting it more often. But I'm not spinning it fast enough. All right, I'm gonna take a quick break and I'm gonna come back in a couple minutes and practice some more. All right, I took a quick break. I took some breathers and Travis and I, the videographer actually talking about like, why do the ones that are successful look so smooth and the ones that I'm tripping look really erratic? And here's what I'm pretty sure I figured out and we're gonna find out is I'm pretty sure the fastness of this rope that I was using, I was rushing that first spin, which was causing me to trip on the first spin every single time. So just like with double unders where over spinning is a huge issue or rushing that first spin is a huge issue. The way to fix it is going with a heavier rope. I'm terrified to try with this because I feel like if this whacks me, it's gonna hurt so much. But my theory is that moving to a slower, thicker jump rope is gonna help me. So let's try it out. So much slower. This is the uh, five ounce cable. Ow. <laughs> Come on, Ben, I know it's there. Oh, it's close, why did I trip? I got it and I did one and this fell out. So we're gonna try to reattach this again. All right, Mike is back in. Now, let's try that again. There we go. Woo, that was almost too unbroken. Here's what I've learned. Slower rope really is helping me. It's helping me stay nice and controlled and slow. If I keep practicing, my guess is that I'm gonna be able to do them. I just have to remember to keep jumping high. There. <laughs> Oh, that was so painful. But there you have it. That was two, I think, unbroken. I think I'm gonna call it there because I am tired. It's really hot in this gym right now. I'm sweating my butt off. And honestly, that hurts. Now, let this be a lesson. I think I've been practicing for about 15, maybe 20 minutes. If you're practicing double under crossovers or any skill, I want you to try to limit yourself to 15 to 20 minutes per session. If I just kept practicing and practicing and practicing for the next hour, yeah, I might get better at them in the moment, but it's gonna bang me up for later. What I wanna do is come back a few days later and maybe make a different video of me trying to come back to the double under crossover. So before you leave, let's go over, let's review this so that you can take this and apply it to your own training, whether you're trying to learn double under crossovers or some other drill. Number one, make sure you look good. Two, seriously, is start small. So remember my goal was not to start with a big set of unbroken. Instead, my goal was to start by doing one. And it took me a while but I finally was able to kind of unlock the pieces to doing one. I got a longer rope. I made sure that my rope had a rigid enough cable and then I was able to finally get one. I also noticed that if I really focused on crossing my arms, which I'm not very good at, if I only got to here, I'd trip. But if I'd reach really far and I'd hold the rope at the ends of the handles, AKA getting more extension. See if I choke up, less extension. But if I get at the edge of the handles and I really extend, I was seeing success. And then during the break, cause I really needed to take a breather. I was sweating and I was tired. Took a break, talked to Travis, thought about it a little bit, and he's like, yeah, man, the ones that you do look really smooth. How important is it to have a third party or a secondary set of eyes to watch your movement? If I had filmed myself, normally what I would do is I would take my camera, film myself in slow motion, and then see, see what I'm doing right and wrong. But Travis was able to be like, hey, man, it looked like you were like rushing all the ones that you tripped. I was like, you know what? I bet that's it. I bet if I move to a heavier jump rope that forces me to slow down and I'm really deliberate with that cross, I bet you I'll get it. And sure enough, now I can say with confidence, I think I'm a lot more consistent at them with this bigger rope. And the fact, the fact that I'm able to do a couple unbroken, I don't think I made that one, but ow, that hurt. The fact that I was able to pick it up and get some when I felt like I wasn't making much progress and then boom, was able to get multiple unbroken. That's a huge sign that I'm onto something. Just like with double unders, once I learn how to do them with the heavier, slower rope, then they're gonna be ugly. I'm gonna be jumping all over the place. Like I'm sure people who can do crossovers are watching this video like, wow, that was terrible. But I've never tried this before. I wasn't a boxer. I've literally never tried these in my entire life. But here's what I know that I will do is as I learn and as I improve, these will turn into smaller jumps. I'll be able to move to a more efficient rope with a lighter cable. I won't have to be as crazy with my arms or my legs. So slowly but surely over time, I will take what I have and I will refine it like a sculpture and make it beautiful. But for now, I started by getting one and then I moved on to try to get one consistently, which I was able to do. And then after getting one consistently, I said, can I do one and keep the rope spinning? And then maybe do another one, which I was able to do. And then the next step after that was, can I do 
uh, crossover, single, single, crossover, single, single, crossover. And then the next step was, hey, let's try to do some unbroken. And you saw the highs and lows and how I, there's some times where I looked like I was losing it and where I got it back. But if you practice like this, nice short bursts of 15 to 20 minutes per session, I promise you, you can make a lot of progress in your training. If you want to learn a skill like double unders, muscle ups, pull ups, or any other CrossFit skill using this kind of method, handstand walks, handstand pushups. We have free training that I love to send you. If you go to wadprep.com, you can select the skill that you want to learn and I'll send you some free training. Or if you really wanna take things to the next level, come join Wad Prep Academy. Wad Prep Academy is literally filled with 25 plus, I think there's like 30 courses. Each one is a different skill, teaching you the exact same way that I just learned double under crossovers by myself. I teach you the exact same way with in-depth videos, slow motion analysis, and you have the exact drills, the exact reps, the exact sets that will slowly but surely help you learn all of the CrossFit skills. So come join Wide Prep Academy. You can get it all. It's valued at thousands of dollars if you bought every course individually, but you can get it all for one low annual price. So if you click the link below or go to wideprep.com slash academy, that will take you to the academy and you can learn more about it. All right, hopefully you liked this video. Thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I know this was a new style of video. Smash the subscribe button if you haven't already. In the comments below, just tell me your thoughts. What did you notice? You be the coach of me, because I can't see myself on camera right now. What did you notice? What was the good, what was the bad, what was the ugly? Are you impressed? Are you, are you like really disappointed in me? I mean, for me, I thought it was gonna be a little bit easier than it was, so now I realize why it was so tough for those games athletes, but I know that with a little bit more practice, with maybe two or three more sessions, I think I'm gonna be able to do five, six, 10, 15 unbroken, and I will be sure to let you know on Instagram when I do that, because I'll brag about it. Thank you so much for being here. I'll uh, see you in the comments, and I'll also see you in the next video. Crop Top out.